Hello students, let us continue our discussion on chemical potentials in real systems and today we are going to work on certain numerical problems in this topic. Okay, so, obviously as uh, uh, in continuation with our uh, last discussion, we are talking about uh, fugacity of a real gas, where fugacity is defined as a coefficient phi multiplied by the pressure. So, pressure is what we use for ideal gases, but in real gases we will use fugacity. So, is there any way that I can find out what the fugacity of the real gas is? We have already seen that if I know how to evaluate Z which is nothing but the compression factor and which is defined as pressure, the measured pressure multiplied by the molar volume divided by the universal gas constant and the temperature in degree Kelvin. Then this is a quantity which is regularly measured for any given experiment in the uh, gas phase for real gases. So, if you know z for different values of p, you can uh, measure z and evaluate the integrand as z minus 1 by p and then integrate this and find out the logarithm of the fugacity coefficient. And once you know the fugacity coefficient, then you can go ahead and find out the chemical potential in terms of its standard state because in that case the chemical potential would be the chemical potential of the system in its standard state plus R T L n and then a function of the fugacity. Now, moving ahead, let us have this uh, problem where we are supposed to find out the fugacity coefficient of a real gas for which experimentally it has been established that this gas obeys the uh, equation of state where P is the pressure, then V m is the molar volume of the gas, but here it is corrected by a small characteristic constant of the gas. So, instead of a molar volume only, I have molar volume minus B, this is equal to R T. Okay? So, as you understand that in ideal gases, all the gas molecules are uh, assumed to be point particles with uh, vanishing uh, volume, but in real gases they have a finite volume and this is what is being reflected as a correction to the mol uh, molar volume in the equation of state. So, starting from the equation of state, I can uh, write down that this simplifies to P into V m minus B p equal to R t. Okay? And this I will reorganize and say that P V m is therefore, B p plus R t. So, I have taken minus B p from this side and put it on the right hand side. So, making it B p plus R t. Once I understand that, then what is the quantity that I am looking for? I am looking for z that is a compression factor whose definition is P V m by R t. So, what I will do next is for this gas, real gas that I am working with, I know that this equation is valid. I will now divide both sides of this equation by R t. So, what is it that I will get? I will get P V m by R t that must be equal to B p by R t plus 1. So, starting from the equation of state, I have now learned that the compression factor which is uh, defined as P into molar volume by R t that must be equal to B p by R t plus 1. Therefore, at a given temperature t, if the pressure of the gas is P, then I understand that I can calculate Z. Okay? Please remember that the value of B is dependent on 
which gas you are using and R anyway is a universal constant. And therefore, the next step would obviously be to find out what z minus 1 is. Very nicely I find out that it has a very simple algebraic expression which is B p by R t. And now I am ready to evaluate ln phi because in order to do that I understand ln phi is equal to this quantity where I will have to know z minus 1 as a function of pressure. So, now I go ahead and try and find out evaluate the integrand for the given real gas. So, the integrand now is z minus 1 by p which from this expression turns out to be b divided by r t. Let me remind you once again for a given gas b is a characteristic constant independent of which thermodynamic state the system is in. Okay? So, at a given temperature therefore, z minus 1 and pressure z minus 1 by p is given by b by r t and I can now go ahead and do the integration. So, ln phi now turns out to be b by r t into d p and I am integrating from say 0 to p. So, what is going to be the answer? As I have already mentioned repeatedly b is a constant for the gas, t is held constant for my given experiment, r is a universal constant. Therefore, the answer to this integration is going to be b p by r t and that immediately tells me what is phi. So, phi for this given system is given by exponential of b p by r t. Therefore, as you see that if you know the equation of state, you will be able to find out what the fugacity of this real gas is going to be. And you can also find out how far deviated this real gas is from its ideal gas behavior. The next set of problem that I take here is a combined problem and I am looking at activity coefficient of a solute in solution. So, let me read out the problem for you. A solution is prepared by dissolving 24 grams of a solute whose molecular weight is given to you which is 241.0 grams per mole in 500 grams of water. Okay, so, this is a solution that you are working with. You have gone to the lab, weighed out 24 grams of the solute and dissolved it in 500 grams of water. Then you took this solution and put it in contact with uh, a thermostat which is able to cool the solution to very low temperatures. Okay even below 0 degree centigrade. You will find that at 0 degree centigrade 1 atmospheric pressure, this solution will still remain in the liquid state. But if you can lower the temperature a bit farther, you will find that the solution would freeze and you can note down the temperature at which the solution freezes and it is found to be minus 0 0.359 degree centigrade. Now, I am asking you to find out the activity coefficient of the solute. So, in this case obviously, you would require some additional information. So, given uh, conditions are you are working at one atmospheric pressure whereby the freezing point of pure water is 0 degree centigrade, 0, 0.0 degree centigrade. And I also know the cryoscopic constant of water which is 1.86 degree centigrade per mole. Okay. How do I solve this problem? I need to understand that since the I am talking about freezing of the solution. So, my experimental data is giving me a depression of the freezing point because if we if I had 
the uh, pure water, it would have frozen at 0 degree centigrade. Okay? So, that is the first clue that I have. So, which means that I am going to use colligative properties to solve this problem. Now, coming back, what I find is uh, to use the colligative property, I must know the number of solute molecules in the solution. Do I know that? No. I know only the weight of the solute, obviously that is what I have weighed out in the laboratory in some weight of the water. So, let me find out the number of moles of solute that I have dissolved in 500 grams of water. So, n is equal to the weight of the solute divided by the molecular weight of the solute and that gives me n to be equal to nearly about 0.1 mole. Okay. But these many moles have been dissolved in 500 grams of water that is 0.5 kg of water. Whenever we are working with colligative property, you know that we are working with uh, a concentration scale which is molality whereby I need the number of moles of the solute per kg of water. And here I have a solution where I know that I have nearly about 0.1 mole of the solute in half kg of water. So, how will I find out the molality of the solution? The molality of the solution is number of moles dissolved divided by the number of the uh, number of kgs of water that I have used to prepare the solution. So, in the molal scale I will have m is equal to 0.1992 moles. So, I have a solution whose molality is 0.1992. I will work with this. What is the other thing that I need to know? From the colligative property I know that there is a depression of freezing point of the solution and this is related to the activity of the solution and the proportionality constant is the cryoscopic constant for the pure solvent. Now, activity I can write down as activity coefficient multiplied by the molal concentration of the solute in the given solution. Okay? And here my task is to find out gamma. Okay? So, what I will do is I will rewrite this expression and say that gamma is equal to delta t divided by k f into m. Now, here I know what m is, I know what k f is, it is, a, it is some data that is available in the literature and my experiment tells me delta t that is the freezing point of the solvent minus freezing point of the solution and when I evaluate this that turns out to be 0 0.359 degree centigrade. So, now I am all set. I know delta t which appears for gamma uh, in the numerator for gamma. I know k f and m. So, I can now go ahead and find out what gamma is. So, what I have done as you can see here instead of delta t, I have put in its value which is 0.359 degree centigrade here. Then this is k f whose value I know is 1.86 degree centigrade per mole and here I have put in the value of m which I found out to be 0.1992 mole. So, as you see that the mole and the mole inverse here would cancel out. The centigrade, degree centigrade and degree centigrade, they would also cancel out and the result would be gamma equal to 0.97. Now, what does this number tell you? This number is fairly close to 1, which says that this solution has a nearly ideal behavior, but not fully so. Because for a completely ideal solution, I would have had gamma equal to 1, so that the activity would be equal to the molality. But here, 
gamma equal to 0 0.97 thereby indicating that this is a real solution where there is substantial interaction between the solute and the solvent thereby requiring us to use activity instead of molality in the evaluation and analysis of the uh, uh, data that we have got for the freezing of our solution. I hope you understood uh, the implications of a very simple uh, uh, problem here. So, let us now go ahead and uh, try and uh, understand another problem and here the solute that I am using is uh, chloro, uh, uh, chloroform and I am uh, using a very dilute solution of chloroform in acetone. I have three such solutions. In the first solution you see that the mole fraction of chloroform is 0 0.059. In the second solution it is uh, its uh, mole fraction is slightly higher it is 0.123 and the third solution it is near about 0 0.2 it is 0 0.185 and as you know that both chloroform and acetone are volatile. Therefore, uh, when I prepare a liquid solution by uh, solvating chloroform in acetone in a sealed vial then uh, both chloroform and acetone will evaporate and there will be a mixture of these two components forming a, uh, 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 the vapor in contact with the solution. So, you can measure the partial vapor pressure of uh, 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 chloroform for example and here the partial vapor pressures of chloroform in the units of millimeter of mercury are given to you. So, uh, this is 9.2 for the first solution, 20.4 for the second solution and 31.9 for the third solution and your job would be to obtain the activity of chloroform and the activity coefficient of chloroform for each of these solutions. Obviously, in order to do that you would require the knowledge of Henry's law constant for chloroform in acetone. Okay? So, here K h is given as 0.199 atmosphere. So, obviously, there are two things that you need to do. Step 1, in order to be able to use the Henry's law, you should be converting these partial pressures into atmosphere. Okay? So, that is exactly what I will do by utilizing this information that one atmosphere is 760 millimeter of mercury. Okay? So, that is what I have done over here. Then the partial pressure of chloroform in the units of atmosphere can be obtained by taking the value in millimeter of mercury and dividing it by 760. So, here I have uh, I have 9.2 divided by 760, here I have 20.4 divided by 760 and finally, I have 31.9 divided by 760. So, in the rest of the analysis I will see that these values of partial vapor pressure of chloroform in atmosphere is going to be useful for me. Now, you might wonder that these days I have a calculator then why did not I uh, evaluate these numbers? I could have evaluated these numbers, but I will tell you the reason a little later. So, what is it that I do after this? With the new unit of partial vapor pressure of chloroform, I understand that the activity of chloroform is the observed partial pressure divided by the Henry's law uh, constant okay? and I have been provided with the Henry's law constant. So, for the solution 1 what shall I have? I will be having the activity evaluated as this is the partial pressure of chloroform 9.2 divided by 760 in units uh, of atmosphere and I further divide this particular uh, ratio by k h 
which is uh, 0.199 atmosphere. So, then obviously, you understand that the resultant quantity is dimensionless. Similarly, I have uh, an evaluation of the activity for the solution 2 and the solution 3. Now, I will do the calculation. As you see that these are uh, real numbers being divided uh, and obviously, if you do the first division first, you will probably be making a small mistake while you round up your final value. And that is the reason why I postponed doing this entire exercise till the last moment. So, that even with round off my errors are my errors, the errors that I uh, accumulate in my calculation are minimal. So, going ahead, what are the values that I get? By uh, doing the actual calculations, I find that the activity of the chloroform uh, in, uh, in the given solution is 0.061 for the solution 1, for the solution 2 it is 0.135 and for solution 3 it is 0.2. 1, 1. Now, if I go ahead and try to understand what is going to be the activity coefficient, what should I do? All I have to do is, I will have to take the value of activity and divide it by the mole fraction of chloroform. Do I know both the quantities? The answer is yes. Here for solution 1, I know that this is the activity of chloroform and this is the mole fraction of chloroform. So, similarly, here is the activity of this uh, chloroform in solution 2 and this is the mole fraction of chloroform in solution 2. So, I should be able to find out gamma of solution 2 and repeat it the same process for the solution 3 and therefore, these are the values that you are going to get when you are dealing with the solution of chloroform in acetone. So, in this lecture today, we have worked on three, three different problems. So, this is the last problem that I wanted to show to you in today's class. So, we have seen how to find out the activity coefficient of a real gas, then how to find out the activity coefficient of a solution, where I have measured some property like the depression of freezing point and finally, we have talked about a solution of a volatile solute in a solvent where the solute follows the Henry's law. And there I could show you how to find out the activity and the activity coefficient. I have not talked about ionic solutions that we will do when we talk about electrochemistry. That is all for today. Thank you.